high power view of a thyroid gland and as you know where is the location of the thyroid gland it is located inferior to the larynx and above the trachea it consists of two lobes and these two lobes are attached by means of a narrow isthmus all right the thyroid gland is covered by a capsule and this capsule sends a connective tissue septa which divides the gland into further small lobules so here you can see this is the ill defined connective tissue capsule and here you can see the capsule sends a septa within the substance or the parenchyma of the gland which also carries blood vessels and thereby this connective tissue septa further subdivides the parenchyma of the gland into smaller lobules all right so what is the gland made up of what is the basic structure of the gland the gland is made up of numerous follicles which are known as the thyroid follicles look at this there are a lot of follicles oval shaped or round follicles and contained within the lumen here you can see within the lumen of these follicles you can see certain secretion look at this all these follicles are filled with an intensely eosinophilic secretion which is known as the colloid which is the main secretion of these thyroid follicles okay which produce the colloid which is responsible for the production of the hormone thyroxin all right so this colloid consists of the two types of hormones it consists of two types t3 and t4 the triiodothyronine and the tetraiodothyronine so this is the colloid which is responsible for the production of the thyroxine which is the active form t3 or t4 t3 t3 or t4 and what is it what is the storage form it is stored in the form of t3 which later gets converted into t4 all right so look at this follicles the high power view of the follicles so the follicles here the thyroid follicles they are lined by cells depending on the activity of the gland we can find different the thyroid gland is three different stages it can be either in active highly active stage moderately active or inactive stage when the gland is in inactive stage you can see that the lumen of the follicle is full of colloid all right the colloid material that means it is located within the follicle it is not being transmitted into the blood capillary so in an inactive state the follicle will be full of colloid and the lining epithelium of the follicle would be squamous in appearance it will be a low cuboidal or squamous variety of lining epithelium in which state the inactive state that means there is no activity in the gland it is in a resting phase so all the colloid material is stored within the gland so that's why the follicles are full of the colloid secretion all right in a moderately active state you can see some amount of colloid they'll be partially filled like here you can see the follicles will be partially filled with the colloid and the lining epithelium is mostly cuboidal or low columnar in appearance all right and whereas in a highly active state of the gland the lining epithelium is columnar simple columnar epithelial lining and very scanty colloid secretion within the follicles because it's not stored whatever is produced it is released into the blood stream all right
So looking at the lining epithelium and amount of the colloid, you can state the activity of the gland. So here you can see that is the lining epithelium and you know it can be different sections. The section can pass directly right through the middle of the follicle. So this is the cross section and then sometimes from the top of the follicle here you can see this is a tangential section which is passing above the follicle. It is not cross through the lumen. It doesn't show any colloid in the middle. So that's a tangential section whereas this is passing right through the follicle. So you see through and through across it. You can see also the colloid here. Alright. And here you can see this is the interfollicular, interlobular connective tissue which consists of the capillary blood vessels. Alright. Now these cells, what are they responsible for producing? The cells lining the thyroid follicles, they produce the hormone thyroxine. Alright. Other than this, we can also see some other cells which are present between the basement membrane of the follicle. Alright. And in between the follicular cells. These cells are known as the parafollicular cells. Here you can see these are a group of parafollicular cells. Now how can you distinguish between the parafollicular cells and the follicular cells which are lining the follicles? Number one, the parafollicular cells are much larger in size than the follicular cells. Alright? They are polyhedral in shape. Alright? They are larger in size than the follicular cells. You can see a distinct nucleus and a cytoplasm here in the parafollicular cells and they are lining the basement membrane and they never reach the lumen of the follicle. They never reach the lumen. And sometimes when a group of parafollicular cells are present, they appear to be present in between the interfollicular space. So they appear to be present in the interfollicular space. So here you can see these are a group of parafollicular cells. And these parafollicular cells are responsible for the production of the hormone calcitonin. And what's the function of the hormone calcitonin? When is it produced? It is produced when the calcium levels rise or very high in the blood. So their function is basically to lower down the calcium level by means of reabsorption from the bones. So they activate the osteoclast. Okay, this activates the osteoclast. Which, which cells are responsible for the reabsorption of the bone? You tell me. Is it the blood? The blood. All right, all right. Settle down. Settle down. This slide was, didn't have a good focus. Let's see another slide. 